Welcome to CPCS, CSCS, 2020, 2021, Questions and Answers. The latest questions and answers for CITB Health and Safety Test. Question 1. What are two possible consequences for you if your employer does not prevent accidents and ill health at work? Give two answers. A. You may not be able to work, which would affect your income and family life. B. You may suffer an injury, affecting your health and well-being. C. You will have to work longer hours to earn more money. D. You will have worse welfare facilities on site while improvements are made. E. You won't get the training required to continue working on site. The correct answer is A and B. Question 2. Why is it the employer's legal responsibility to discuss matters of health and safety with employees? Give one answer. A. So that employees are informed of things that will protect their health and safety. B. So that employees do not have any responsibilities for health and safety. C. So that employees will never have to attend any other health and safety training. D. So that your employer will not have any legal responsibility for employees' health and safety. The correct answer is A. Question 3. Who should you speak to if the work of another contractor is affecting your safety? Give one answer. A. The contractor. B. The contractor's supervisor. C. Your supervisor. D. Your workmates. The correct answer is C. Question 4. What should you do if you cannot do a job in the way described in the method statement? Give one answer. A. Ask other workers how they think it should be done. B. Contact the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. C. Do not start work until you have talked to your supervisor. D. Make up a better way to do it and carry on. The correct answer is C. Question 5. In order to reduce the risk of accidents, which one of the following should be avoided when driving vehicles on site? Give one answer. A. Drive through loading and unloading areas. B. Implement a one-way system around the site. C. Reverse without the use of a vehicle marshaler. D. Use designated turning areas. The correct answer is C. Question 6. Which two of the following are the main reasons for reporting accidents, incidents, and near misses? Give two answers. A. Certain incidents or accidents have to be reported to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE. B. To find out whom claims should be made against. C. To help the company avoid being prosecuted or fined. D. To make sure none of the supervisors find out about the accident. E. To understand how and why things went wrong. The correct answer is A and E. Question 7. What should be done in the event of an emergency on site? Give one answer. A. Collect your personal items and leave the site. B. Follow the site emergency procedure. C. Leave the site by the nearest exit and return home. D. Phone the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, for advice. The correct answer is B. 
Question 8. You witness a serious accident on site. What immediate action should you take? Give two answers. A. Call out to other workers so they can call for help. B. Check if it is safe to approach the injured person. C. Lift the injured person and take them to the site office. D. Record the date and time in the incident book. E. Sit the injured person up and give them food and water. The correct answer is A and B. Question 9. What should not be in a first aid kit? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Question 10. If the first aid kit on site is empty, what should you do? Give one answer. A. Bring your own first aid supplies into work. B. Find out who is taking all the first aid supplies. C. Ignore the problem as it is always the same. D. Inform the person who looks after the first aid kit. The correct answer is D. Question 11. Someone is knocked unconscious and you are not trained in first aid. What should you do first? Give one answer. A. Give them mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. B. Send for medical help. C. Slap their face to wake them up. D. Turn them over so that they are lying on their back. The correct answer is B. Question 12. If there is an emergency while you are on site, what should you do first? Give one answer. A. Follow the site emergency procedure. B. Leave the site and go home. C. Phone home and then leave the site. D. Phone the health and safety executive, HSE. The correct answer is A. Question 13. What should you wear if there is a risk of materials flying into your eyes? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is D. Question 14. Good quality personal protective equipment, PPE, will be marked with which letter or letters? Give one answer. A. B. C. D. The correct answer is A. Question 15. What are two of the best ways of helping to save energy on site and reduce harmful emissions? Give two answers. A. Keep windows and doors closed in offices and welfare facilities when the heating is on. B. Report any defective, non-powered hand tools so that they can be repaired or replaced. C. Switch off plant and equipment, including generators, when they are not in use. D. Use a generator rather than mains electricity for the offices and small items of equipment. The correct answer is A and C. Question 16. During excavation work, some interesting old coins are found in the loosened soil. What is the most appropriate action? Give one answer. A. Hide them. Archaeologists working on site will delay the works. B. Keep excavating and see how many more there are to find. C. Keep quiet. The person who found them should keep them. D. Stop excavating the site and contact the supervisor. The correct answer is D. 
Question 17. You are carrying out a noisy work activity and realize that it cannot be finished within the normal working hours of your site. What is the first thing you should do? Give one answer. A. Carry on so that you can finish doing the job as soon as possible. B. Ensure you are wearing appropriate hearing protection before you resume work. C. Stop work and inform site management so they can look at the impact of the activity. D. Visit the neighbors of the site to tell them what you will be doing. The correct answer is C. Question 18. Which of the following would help to protect the environment? Give one answer. A. Arriving on time for work every day. B. Keeping accurate time sheets. C. Keeping to the health and safety rules. D. Saving water and energy wherever possible. The correct answer is D. Question 19. After asbestos, which of the following causes the most ill health to construction workers? Give one answer. A. Diesel fumes. B. Resin, solvent and paint vapors. C. Silica dust. D. Wood and MDF dust. The correct answer is C. Question 20. Pigeon droppings and nests are found in an area where you are required to work. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Carry on with your work carefully, so you don't disturb them. B. Stop work, do not touch anything, and seek advice. C. Try to catch the pigeons so you can move them out of the way. D. Wait for the pigeons to fly away before carrying on with your work. The correct answer is B. Question 21. What should you do if you find lots of old bird nests and droppings in an area you are working in? Give one answer. A. Carry on working and work around them. B. Check there are no live birds present, then carry on working. C. Stop working and speak to a supervisor to arrange for decontamination work. D. Sweep them up and put them in a bin liner immediately. The correct answer is C. Question 22. What potential disease is this worker unprotected from? Give one answer. A. Dermatitis. B. Nasal cancer. C. Skin cancer. D. Tetanus. The correct answer is B. Question 23. Planned work requires the use of a power tool to cut or grind materials. Select the two best ways to control the dust. Give two answers. A. Fit a dust extractor or collector to the machine. B. Keep the R clean and tidy. C. Wear a dust mask. D. Wet cutting. E. Work slowly and carefully. The correct answer is A and D. Question 24. What must you do when using water to keep dust down when cutting? Give one answer. A. Ensure that there is as much water as possible. B. Get someone to stand next to you and pour water from a bottle. C. Make sure that the water flow is correctly adjusted. D. Pour water onto the surface before you start cutting. The correct answer is C. 
Question 26. If you hear a ringing sound in your ears after working with noisy equipment, what does this mean? Give one answer. A. The noise level was high but acceptable. B. You have also been subjected to vibration. C. Your hearing has been temporarily damaged. D. Your hearing protection was working properly. The correct answer is C. Question 25. When working with materials creating dust, what should be monitored? Give one answer. A. The color of dust created. B. The direction in which the dust travels. C. The level of exposure to the dust. D. The smell the dust creates. The correct answer is C. Question 27. What should an employee do if they think noise at work may have damaged their hearing? Give one answer. A. Ask their employer or doctor to arrange a hearing test. B. Nothing, as the damage has already been done. C. Plug their ears with cotton wool to stop any more damage. D. Take time off work, as they are unwell. The correct answer is A. Question 28. Using a grinder whilst wearing this personal protective equipment, PPE, could result in which of the following? Give one answer. A. Eye injuries. B. Hearing damage. C. Lung disease. D. Wiles disease. The correct answer is B. Question 29. What action should shift workers take at work if they are taking time-dependent medication, such as insulin? Give one answer. A. Ask colleagues to help them remember when to take their medication. B. Consult their doctor and inform their manager to help plan how to accommodate this. C. Not tell their colleagues each time they need to take their medication during their shift. D. Only work shifts after they have taken their required medication. The correct answer is B. Question 30. What should you use to clean very dirty hands? Give one answer. A. Paraffin. B. Soap and water. C. Thinners. D. White spirit. The correct answer is B. Question 31. Reducing the risk of cuts and abrasions would require protection for what part of the body? Give one answer. A. Blood. B. Bones. C. Hair. D. Skin. The correct answer is D. Question 32. What would be a good way of reducing fatigue in the workforce? Give one answer. A. Early start times and a late finish. B. Random start and finish times. C. Regular start and finish times. D. Rotating shift patterns. The correct answer is C. Question 33. If a worker is feeling stressed, when is the best time for them to address the issue? Give one answer. A. As soon as they realize they have symptoms of stress. B. In about six months, if the issue is still causing them stress. C. 
only after the stress level gets so bad it causes an accident. D. When they have finished work and they are away from the workplace. The correct answer is A. Question 34. A worker with a full UK driving license has been asked to move a machine they have never been trained on. What should the worker do? Give one answer. A. Explain that they are not trained and competent to move it. B. Move the machine as long as there is a vehicle marshaller. C. Move the machine as long as there is no one else near it. D. They can move the machine as they have a full UK driver's license. The correct answer is A. Question 35. What does it mean if you have to twist or turn your body when you lift and place a load? Give one answer. A. The weight you can lift safely will be less than usual. B. The weight you can lift safely will be more than usual. C. You must wear a back brace in this situation. D. You will be able to lift the same weight as usual. The correct answer is A. Question 36. If you need to reach above your head to place a load or lower a load to the floor, which of these is not true? Give one answer. A. It will be more difficult to keep your back straight. B. The load will be more difficult to control. C. You can safely handle more weight than usual. D. You will put extra stress on your arms and your back. The correct answer is C. Question 37. How should a container, or any residue, be disposed of if it has the sign on the label or packaging? Give one answer. A. Follow specific instructions on the label and in the work instructions. B. If it is a liquid and less than one liter you can pour it down a drain. C. Leave it somewhere for other people to deal with. D. Put it in any type of skip or bin. The correct answer is A. Question 38. If your job needs a hot work permit, what two things would you expect to have to do? Give two answers. A. Check for signs of fire when you stop work. B. Have a fire extinguisher close to the work. C. Know how to refill fire extinguishers. D. Know where all the fire extinguishers are kept on site. E. Write a site evacuation plan. The correct answer is A and B. Question 39. You are using a generator to power some lighting when a lamp blows. You have a spare lamp. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Carry on working in the dark. B. Disconnect the lighting from the generator before replacing the lamp. C. Replace the lamp without disconnecting the generator. D. Wait for a fully qualified electrician with a NICEIC card. The correct answer is B. Question 40. Why are battery-powered tools preferred over 110-volt tools in a construction environment? Give one answer. A. They are cheaper to run. B. They are more powerful. C. They are quieter. D. They are safer. The correct answer is D. Question 41. 
Why do building sites use a 110 volt electricity supply instead of a 230 volt supply? Give one answer. A. It is cheaper. B. It is less likely to kill you. C. It is safer for the environment. D. It moves faster along the cables. The correct answer is B. Question 42. What two things should you do to reduce trips and injuries caused by untidy leads and extension cables? Give two answers. A. Keep trailing cables and leads close to the wall. B. Make sure your cables have not been used before. C. Only use thinner 230 volt extension cables. D. Run cables and leads above head height and over the top of doorways and walkways. E. Tie any excess cables and leads up into the smallest coil possible. The correct answer is A and D. Question 43. Do simple hand tools like trowels, screwdrivers, saws and hammers need to be inspected? Give one answer. A. No, it is not necessary to check such tools. B. Only if someone else has borrowed the tools. C. Only if the tools have not been used for a few weeks. D. Yes, the tools should be checked each time they are used. The correct answer is D. Question 44. A forklift truck is blocking the route you need to take on site. It is lifting materials onto a scaffold. What should you do? Give one answer. A. Catch the driver's attention and then walk under the raised load. B. Only walk under the raised load if you are wearing a safety helmet. C. Start to run so that you are not under the load for very long. D. Wait or take another route, but never walk under a raised load. The correct answer is D. Question 45. Which of the following is a recognized control measure when reversing a vehicle? Give one answer. A. Standing on the back to direct it. B. Turning on all the vehicle lights. C. Turning the side radio off. D. Using a vehicle marshal. The correct answer is D. Question 46. Accidents on site are often caused by materials falling from vehicles during what process? Give one answer. A. Cleaning. B. Refueling. C. Repainting. D. Unloading. The correct answer is D. Question 47. What is the correct way to climb a ladder? Give one answer. A. By having two people on the ladder at all times. B. Having three points of contact with the ladder at all times. C. Having two points of contact with the ladder at all times. D. Only using the ladder when wearing a safety harness. The correct answer is B. Question 48. How many people are allowed on a ladder at the same time? Give one answer. A. A maximum of two people. B. One person on each section of an extension ladder. C. Only one person. D. Three people, if it is long enough. The correct answer is C. 
Question 49. Which of the following is the safest method of accessing a mobile access tower? Give one answer. A. Climbing a ladder inside the tower. B. Climbing a ladder outside of the tower. C. Climbing a rope on the outside of the tower. D. Climbing up the outside of the tower. The correct answer is A. Question 50. What should you do if you are required to use access equipment that you have not been trained to use? Give one answer. A. Ask someone else to do it. B. Do the job if it won't take long. C. Get a ladder instead. D. Stop work and speak to your supervisor. The correct answer is D. Thank you for watching and good luck for your test.